Hello friends, this is Jennifer Terry and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will talk about the departure process. Leaving the Philippines, exiting the Philippines, whether it's temporary, permanent. Here is your departure travel guide. Let's start with the basics. Mandatory, bring your face mask and face shield. Next, your Trace app on your phone. You should have that. On your phone, you need a Trace app. You needed that when you entered. You also need it when you leave. Okay, the Trace app is used in all Philippine airports. Next up, a COVID test, a negative COVID test if required by your airline or your transiting country or your country of destination. To give you an idea, here is a list of countries that require a negative COVID test for travelers from the Philippines. So we have Cambodia, China, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Macau, Malaysia, Japan, Papua New Guinea, Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan, Thailand, Vietnam, Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, UAE, USA, Canada, United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand. So if you are coming from the Philippines and traveling to these countries, you'll need a negative COVID test result. Now, the type of test and its validity will vary with each country. So some COVID testing laboratories may not be accredited by some countries. So it is advised to check the complete list of requirements if the COVID-19 testing laboratory is accredited or authorized by your destination country. And make sure that the type of test that you get is the correct type of test. We had a subscriber before who was gonna travel to the Philippines and then via Qatar Airways, uh, transit in Qatar, something like that. And he had the wrong type of test. He was refused to board the flight. Make sure you have the correct type of test and the validity. And make sure that your testing laboratory is accredited, recognized by your destination country. Now it's your flight date. You've arrived at the airport. First up, use the baggage cards to carry your belongings inside the terminal. Baggage cards are free of charge. Then for passengers who need assistance, baggage porters are always on standby to assist passengers with a corresponding fee. Now remember that only passengers will be allowed to enter the airport. Prior to entering the terminal, prepare to show a copy of your passport and your plane ticket. Present them to the security personnel manning at the gates. When you enter the terminal, place all your belongings to the x-ray machine and then scan. Use the provided trays for smaller items such as mobile phones, belt, watch, coins, you guys already know this. While the belongings pass through the x-ray machine, passengers should go through the metal detector for screening. When done, retrieve all your belongings. Make sure that nothing is left on the tray. Please return the tray to its proper place. Now you have entered the airport, you've passed through the screening, through the entrance. What's next? Travel tax and terminal fee. All travelers passing through the airport are required to pay terminal fee, except for OFWs. Don't worry because this fee is already incorporated in the airfare that you paid for. Meanwhile, Filipino travelers flying out of the country are required to pay Philippine travel tax. So most of the time, airline companies already include this in the airfare. For I know with... Um, um, Cebu Pacific and Philippine Airlines, they have the option whether you want to prepay or you want to pay at the airport. Or apart from Filipinos, there are foreign nationals who are also required to pay the Philippine travel tax. So foreigners holding a permanent resident visa section 13, quota or preference immigrant visa need to pay the travel tax. Foreign tourists or expatriates who have stayed in the Philippines for more than one year need to pay the travel tax. And Balik Bayans, former Filipinos, foreign spouse, foreign children who stayed in the Philippines for more than one year are also required to pay the Philippine travel tax. How much is the Philippine travel tax? So these are the rates, guys. If you're paying for the full travel tax, we have the first class and the economy class. For the first class, you're going to pay 2,700 pesos. For the economy class, that's 1,620 pesos. 
For the standard reduced travel tax, that's 1350 if you're flying first class, and if it's economy, that's 810 pesos. For privilege reduced travel tax for dependent of an overseas Filipino worker, the first class is for 400 pesos and the economy is for 300 pesos. So who can avail the reduced travel tax? Minors from two years and one day, and then journalists, um, those authorized by the president. And if you haven't prepaid your Philippine travel tax, including in your um, ticket, you may pay that at the airport, as what I mentioned earlier. So Filipino travelers can pay this tax at the Tourism Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone Authority, or TSA counter, located inside the check-in area. Next up is to proceed to your designated counter to check-in. Once you reach the counter, hand in your travel ticket, in your passport, make sure your baggage is within the required baggage allowance of the air carrier. If not, you may be required to pay an excess baggage fee or not have the bag checked in at all. Once your bags are accepted, the agent will give you a printed boarding pass, which will indicate your seating number, your boarding time, your boarding gate. And once you get hold of your boarding pass, proceed to the immigration for travel clearance. Immigration. Before you line up, get a departure card. Fill it out, fill it in. Then line up to get the travel clearance from the immigration. For most, this is the most critical time. So there are separate queuing lines for Filipinos, foreign passport holders, as well as dedicated lines for OFWs, persons with disability, and elderly. Now, what to present to the immigration? Filipinos on tourist visas. Your Filipino passport, it should be more than six months valid and a visa unless you're going to a country with which is visa-free. Next is a confirmed round-trip ticket and a travel health insurance. A Bureau of Immigration form acknowledging risk of travel that looks like this. That form can be downloaded online. And lastly, a negative COVID result if that is required. Now remember, for tourist travelers, um, pahirapan ang paglabas ng tourists, especially sa mga babaeng walang travel history. If you're a Filipina who doesn't have any travel history, then it's more challenging for you to leave the Philippines. So there can be two ex inspections for tourist visa holders. The first inspection is just, you know, the visa, the insurance, the passport, basic but there could be a second inspection. So the Bureau of Immigration shall conduct a secondary inspection when deemed necessary for the purpose of protecting vulnerable victims of human trafficking and illegal recruitment and other related offenses. So through the assessment of the following circumstances. For the second inspection, three things will be considered. Your age, your educational attainment, your educational attainment and your financial capability to travel. If you're not financially capable to travel, um, you have another person sponsoring your travel, you'll need an affidavit of support. It has to be authenticated and other supporting documents. Anything that you think could help, I'd say bring it. And um, proof of strong ties to the Philippines. Proof that you're not gonna overstay in whatever country you're going and you're gonna come back to the Philippines. For example, if you're a student, oh, your enrollment form, your in student records, yes, I'm going back because I'm studying. Or you have a job here, oh, I'm on leave, this is my proof. Or you have a business here, or you have properties here, or you have children here. So yeah, anything that you think is a strong tie that shows, oh, I she's, this person is going back to the Philippines, then bring it. And itinerary too, if they ask you, where are you going? Who are you traveling with? What's the hotel name? Who's this person you're traveling with? Do you have his ID? Do you have his, um, do you have proof of conversation? Oh my God, yeah. That... <laughs> Leaving the Philippines is so hard for Filipinas who have no travel history and who are financially dependent with their foreign partners. Move on with overseas Filipino workers. Filipino passport, your visa, um, the required travel and health documents as specified by your destination, that could be a negative COVID result, health insurance. Next is an overseas employment certificate, your OEC, employment contract, your PDOS, 
execution of BI form acknowledging risk of travel, and a negative COVID result if that is required by the airline or your country of destination or your transiting country. Next up, we have Filipinos who are permanent residents of foreign jurisdictions, green card holders like that. So first, your Philippine passport, it should be at least six months valid. And then your valid permanent visa or permanent resident card. Your CFO, if it's your first time to leave the Philippines as a permanent resident of another country. Your negative COVID result, again, if it is required by your airline, that is transiting country or destination. How about balik bayans, former Filipinos, foreign spouse, and foreign children of Filipinos? What do you need? Foreign passport. And then a negative COVID result if that is required. So foreign nationals, if you were on tourist visa and you stayed for more than six months in the Philippines, then um, you'll need to pay for an ECC or an immigration certificate clearance. Also, those who are holding alien registration certificate I cards, you also have to pay for an ECC when you leave the Philippines. This you can pay at the airport. And the charge for fee and the charge for this one is could be around 1,210 to 3,000 pesos. Now, another thing, travel pass for foreign nationals with visas. So a travel pass is only required if your visa was issued by the Department of Justice, the Board of Investments, the Philippine Retirement Authority, or the Philippine Economic Zone Authority and Economic Zones. And some certain um, Bureau of Immigration visa issued like SVEG. If you are not holding an ECC or an SRC, then you'll need a travel pass if you're a foreign national with visa. Except 9A visas, okay? Holders, balikbayans, no, you don't need travel pass. Alright, so your travel pass will be um, issued by your um, visa issuing agency. So for example, you are a um, SRRB holder, a special retiree resident visa holder, your travel pass will be issued by PRA, Philippine Retirement of Agency. And then once you're cleared at the immigration, proceed to the security check, you know, go through scanning, x-ray and all that. And then proceed to your boarding gate, wait for your plane. That's all. So that is all for the departure process, friends. It's more on, you know, the travel requirements, really. If I have missed anything, comment down below. Comment down below anything. And I'll see you again with another travel update. Don't forget to like this video. Bye.